Hello everyone, today I thought I would talk a little bit about GitHub Copilot. So for those of you that aren't aware, Copilot is a Microsoft uh, GitHub tool that is effectively like an autocomplete run by a uh, machine learning algorithm of sorts. And it sort of runs as like a, a Visual Studio Code extension. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute here. Uh, but the reason why I'm making this video is because a couple people have uh, messaged me and asked if the new $10 a month price tag is worth it. Uh, considering the fact that like I think 80% of my uh, viewers aren't from the United States. You can imagine that some people come from countries where 10 USD a month is a considerable amount. So I just want to make this video to hopefully highlight the pros and cons, where I think you should use it and where I think you should stay away from it under all circumstances. Uh, and I'll try and keep it all pretty fast because I also don't have a lot of time today. <laughs> In full disclosure, it's not for your benefit. I could sit here and talk for hours. It's just I, I don't have a lot of time. So um, basically, the we'll start with the con, uh, the biggest con, in my opinion. Uh, when GitHub Copilot first released, there was a very big issue with how they did licensing. So if we come over here, you can see GitHub Copilot sparks debate around open source licenses. So there was two parts to this issue, in my opinion. The first was that, uh, from my understanding, the uh, Copilot team uh, effectively said that they don't consider... Uh, right here even, it, they don't consider licenses when they do their training. It says uh, all public GitHub uh, code was used in training. We don't distinguish license type. And that's a bit of an issue in terms of where, like where the code comes from that it was trained on. Uh, maybe not legally speaking, uh, but definitely ethically speaking. Uh, because you're talking about a whole host of, of code that was written under certain licenses where the licenses might have said like, hey, this is cool for you to use for educational purposes, uh, but please don't use it professionally. Or it's cool for you to use this, uh, but I'd appreciate some like credit if you do use it. And of course, you're not going to get that credit uh, from this, this machine learning algorithm that now considers it knowledge that it just inherently knows. And this sort of leads into the second issue which is that uh, because all of this code eventually just gets regurgitated into your code base, wherever you're, you're using it, uh, you can end up with some code that's maybe under a, a license that requires you to like attribute the original creator, and it'll then not have that license attached. So a very popular example of this is like the Quake inverse square GitHub copilot issue. I wish I had this open to begin with. Uh, you can even see here it's still a purple link. Uh, effectively, uh, Copilot auto-completed the fast inverse square implementation from Quake 3, which is uh, GPL2 plus code. I don't really know what that uh, entails. Uh, but then it takes that license and it says, yeah, I don't really like that license. And then it auto-completes a separate license and misattributes or mislicenses the code. So here you can see it takes the BSD2 license and puts it at the start. So even if you can get it to spit out a license for whatever like function or method it gave you, that license might not entirely be what the original license was because it doesn't have that type of understanding. Now they, I believe, have worked on this and it's not as big of an issue. My problem still stems from the idea that they didn't consider licenses in their training set to begin with. That's sort of where I... I feel like there's probably some some legal slash ethical issues there. So for me personally, I wouldn't recommend using uh, Copilot in like a professional capacity. I think where the strength is and where you can probably freely use it is going to be if you're like in your personal time just trying to learn. So as an educational tool, I definitely feel like there's some merit there. Uh, I just also feel like in terms of professional work as a business, I wouldn't trust this as far as I could throw it. And it's not a tangible thing, so I can't throw it. So I'm not going to trust it. Um, but in terms of like, uh, if I'm not trying to like make a buck off of it, I'm just trying to learn, then I definitely think there's some ways you can use it. So one example that I love to use, I did the uh, GitHub Copilot unemployment speed runs, is like leak code problems. So if we come over to leak code, 
I just tested this out, but I'll test it with a completely different one. We'll do like the, uh, I don't know, this largest perimeter try. Actually, let's, let's just do like a longest substring without repeating. We'll do a medium problem so it doesn't seem as obvious. So if we come in here, let's say you've been working on this problem all day. You just can't for the life of you figure it out. And let's pretend that there's like no answers to the problem. All you really have is a problem statement like this. What you can do is you can grab this and we'll come over to my test where I just tested out the easy problem and we'll just test out this random medium problem. So the way you can do it is you just create a block of comments and then you just paste in whatever the problem statement is. Once that's done, you can come down to the bottom, just grab the method signature, paste that in as well. And then you're just gonna wait for Copilot to do whatever Copilot needs to do. Now, sometimes you do have to like backspace and hit tab and down here you'll see like the little uh, loading screen. And then once it's done, you hit tab, you get the entire method, you copy it, exit out of here, you paste it into your window. And then let me move this up so we can all see this. Uh, we can then hit like run code and just see if it passes the test. We're not gonna even look at it. We're just gonna see if it works. So we see that the run code result worked. Let's hit submit. It'll run against, I think, some additional test cases. And there we go. So we're uh, passing all of our test cases. So now what we can do, let's say we were stuck on this, we can look at it and we can figure out like where we were getting stuck, compare it to whatever step we were stuck on, whatever piece of logic we didn't understand. Maybe we didn't understand the index plus one part and now we're looking at it like, oh, this makes so much more sense. So this is one area where it can be really helpful is like you're you're going through maybe your leak codes or whatever and you're just stuck on a problem. This is pretty obvious. I feel like pretty much everyone could come up with a solution like this uh, or at least come up with a use case like this. The other one is let's say you're learning a completely new framework. Let's say you're learning uh, Ruby on Rails and you're trying to create like a small link aggregate website of sorts. So you can like uh, post a link with like a name attached to it. So that's what I have here. And what I want to do is I want to get rid of this code in here. And I'm going to pretend that I haven't come up with this code yet. All I have here is a partial or yeah, I guess a partial. It just has a link to the web URL. And you can see here if I get rid of it because of this comment, GitHub Copilot's already suggesting what needs to go here. The other thing I could do is I could just come in here and without that context, I could do something like an equal sign and it's already gonna start giving me whatever it is because it probably sees the URL and it's probably aware of what the previous like save of the file was. So it's trying its best to do some autocomplete here. So this is another area where it can be useful. But what I really like is let's say you can figure out the link to, you can figure out like the basic structure that you need here, but you get stuck at trying to validate the URL. So if we look at the actual application, what we're trying to do is just have a bunch of links that uh, all send us to a proper website. So we come in here, we create a new webby. We say, this takes me to YouTube. And then we just put in a URL that's like, I don't know, U utob dot, uh, I don't know, D-U-R-E. We click create. We have this link. Of course, this link makes no sense. And it's trying to find an ID for this, for this URL. So all of this really not great. What we can do is we can take this and just try to do some validation inside of our model. We write a comment and we just say validate a URL. And then we'll just hit enter. It'll suggest something. I'll hit tab without even reading it and then I'll hit F11 to see what it comes up with. So it validates the URL with the presence of truth. That makes sense. Gives us a format from a URI regular expression. And if I hover over this, we can see sort of hopefully what this says. Uh, but it looks like it's not working, so who cares? I'm now gonna save this, and then RuboCop is gonna completely change what I wrote, and now I have this entire line of code without effectively having to write anything except for a single comment. And if I'm trying to learn, this is really useful, because now I can see, okay, here's how I validate a URL, here's how I say I need this to be present, I need it to have some semblance of a URL, and here I can see there's a uniqueness true, which I might not necessarily want, but I'll keep it for now. And then I have the, the format, of course, which is also good to know. So all of this lets me come in here, click edit. I'll now try to update this. It'll tell me this URI isn't valid. So maybe instead what I try and do is I try to do youtube.com. I hit enter, it's still not gonna work. And then I realize that now it is actually requiring me to use the protocol at the start. 
and now we have a working link. If I click on this link, it'll take me to YouTube instead of erroring out. And then you can see the questionable things that are on my YouTube homepage. So this is definitely one area where I really appreciate it, where you just write a quick comment for something that you don't quite know how to do. You could probably go find it if you went on Google, uh, but instead you're just hoping that Copilot will find something for you. And I think this is really where the strength is because knowing how to write a comment in pretty much any programming language is something you can learn in, in you know 30 seconds. And then from there, you can just go out and uh, learn as you go. So you might do something where like, popular example is I try to do like a def username in, in Rails. So I have like my uh, my user for device where you have like your email and then I just say convert email to username. And then in here we have this and then it returns the self dot email dot split at the at symbol, which if you're not familiar, this will take something like Dean at example dot com and convert it to an array that has Dean and example.com and then the zeroth element will give you dean so it's just going to return the word dean assuming you have an email in your device model but all of that's just done by writing username convert and then it just gives you that back so there's a lot of ways where just having the ability to do this can be really educational um, and the other part of it is, as you're writing some code, you might not have this comment here, but you might do something like email.split. And then as you're writing it, you'll start to get suggestions from, uh, from uh, Copilot. And then those end up saving you a lot of time in the long run too. Really good for educational projects, not necessarily something I would trust in a professional capacity because you never know where you're getting your binary search tree inversion from or something, I don't know. But yeah, I think educationally, I would pay the $10 a month if I had the money available to me and there wasn't something else that I could be spending it on. Uh, but professionally, I wouldn't even let this extension be installed because I don't know how much data Microsoft is farming with it, in, in all honesty. So definitely, you know, it, it, it ultimately depends uh, just be aware that there are some ethical and potentially legal issues that come with using this tool. Uh, although we haven't really, I think, seen any legal issues, I still probably think that most companies wouldn't be comfortable with it entirely. Uh, but I, I'm not a legal expert. Maybe they are. Maybe I'm just full of it. But yeah, hopefully this helps. Uh, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.